Okay, in our last video, we looked at the idea that there are going to be five types of transformations that are isometries, distance preserving mappings. Okay, an identity transformation, the one that leaves everything alone. Translations, just sliding a figure around. Reflections, a mirror image over a line. Rotations, spinning around a center point by some rotational angle. And glide reflections, a translation followed by reflection. In this next video or two, we're going to focus in on the first of these. Well, the identity transformation is just boring. It doesn't do anything. Nothing to study there. So the first one that's of interest is translations. So let's look at that one. Well, what is a translation and what do you need to identify what the translation is? Well, you need to, need to identify a vector. This is why we did some work with vectors as a, as a warm-up and a prelim to this, uh, to this chapter, okay, the first part of it. So a translation by vector V is a transformation which takes each pre-image point and maps it to an image point P prime. And by the way, uh, we're going to be using that notation. So P prime will typically be the image of, of the uh, pre-image point P. Okay, so we're going to do this in such a way that the directed line segment from P to P prime is the vector V. So V is AB, then the translation by vector B in a coordinate system would map the point XY to the point X plus A comma Y plus B for every XY in real numbers. So it moves every point of the plane in that way by adding A to the, you know, if A is the, uh, the X component or first component of the vector, it'll add A to all the X values. And if B is the Y component or second component, it'll add that value of B to all the Y vectors, Y components, okay? So the image of a translation, you know, generic, uh, in informal words might be glide, slide, shift, scoot, okay? But translation is the technical term. It's formed by moving each point of the pre-image along the same vector to its corresponding image point. Recall that a vector has a direction and length, but the position is arbitrary. So to specify a particular translation, we specify the corresponding vector. So we can use this notation to note a translation by vector AB as T sub AB, like that, vector AB. Notice that we define in translations in terms of a geometric object, a vector, that we have previously defined. We will similarly define each type of transformation in terms of geometric figures that we have previously defined and studied in detail. So here's the first question. What points, if any, are fixed by translation by the vector AB? I'm going to let you answer that one on your own. Are any points left alone, or do they all move? And if any are fixed, which ones? Okay. So the next question here is, how do we do this with a compass and straight edge? Okay. So in constructing the image of a translation, we must construct a copy of the given vector starting at each key pre-image point. The key to understanding this construction is to first notice that every copy of the same vector by definition has the same length and the direction angle of the horizontal. This means all copies of the vector are congruent and parallel. Well, hmm, how can we do that with a compass that only makes congruent segments, not necessarily parallel? Well, we just need to make a bunch of parallelograms because remember one of the uh, and how do we make a bunch of parallelograms? Remember, one of the properties of a quadrilateral is a uh, it's a quadrilateral if and only if both pair of opposite sides, both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. So if we can make sure that we get a quadrilateral where both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, then they will automatically have to be parallel as well, and that two of those sides will basically be copies of the uh, of the vector, as long as the arrow's on the right end, the correct end. In the construction below, we're going to use the compass and straight edge to construct a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides congruent. By the two propositions above, this automatically makes the opposite sides parallel. If one side of the parallelogram is the original vector, then the opposite side has the same length as parallel, so it's the same vector. Okay. Pairs of opposite sides will be given in the vector in its original position. So I'm assuming here we've got a, you know, a, a one drawing of the vector somewhere, uh, maybe totally unrelated to where it is in the, in the uh, pre-image set. But we've got one copy, and we can use that to map some points. 
Now, if we want to map a line segment, how many points are on the line segment? Well, there are infinitely many points. So how many times would you do this? Well, I guess technically infinitely many, but that's, that's pr pr impractical, right? Impossible, actually. But what we can do is, for a line segment, we know that a translation is a linear transformation. And so what we're going to end up do, to do is we're going to take a pre-image point for the vertex, uh, or the endpoint of the line segment, map it to its image, then take the other ver uh, endpoint, map it, and then we just use a straight line, uh, straight edge to connect the points, because all the ones in between are going to stay between, because it is a linear transformation. So here are the basic steps, and I'll, I'll, I'll illustrate these in the next video uh, via some, some constructions in GeoGebra, uh, actually and probably in Geometry Sketchpad, where it shows you the, the tools that are only using the equivalent of compass and straight edge tools. Okay, so here's what we do. We set your compass to the length of the given vector, V, mark an arc of this radius, with center at the pre-image point. Go at least at least go in the general direction of the vector and mark part of the arc. You could mark the whole circle. Set your compass to the length from the star of the original vector of the pre-image point and mark an arc of this radius where the two meet uh, uh, will be where you need to go. If it meets twice, you should be able to visually pick out which one's going in the right direction. Okay? And by connecting up the points, O, A, A prime T, you'll get a parallelogram. Uh, of course, we don't have to draw the whole parallelogram out, but we can connect up the appropriate points, draw that vector in, and make our image points. And then if we're doing line segments, you know, put our, line, our straight edge between the image points to find our image line segments. Um, now, there it is. There's a lot of stuff going on here. It's going to be a lot easier if you see me do this in a video. So the next video is going to going to take uh, advantage of take, uh, show you that we are taking advantage of the fact this is a linear transformation. So it maps lines to lines and line segments to line segments. And so even though there are infinitely many points, all we really have to worry about here is three. But at the end, look what happens here. Notice that we've got here's our vector. We end up making a copy of the vector here, going from uh, from A to A prime, a copy going from B to B prime and C to C prime, and you can see if you there's a lot of a lot of busy stuff going here. But if you look, there's a parallelogram right there. Uh, there's a parallelogram right here, and there's one right there as well. So you can kind of you have to get those things, and all the circles, or parts of circles, are all done to to get you uh, where we need to be to make the parallel lines. And then we can think of this as just slide, at this point A is just sliding down this vector to here. Meanwhile, C slides down that vector to here and B slides down and the whole triangle is just gonna slide right down this way to this one here. And you'll see that in motion in the next video. The exercise that you need to do is with the compass and straight edge, just draw some triangle. It's better if it's not a, uh, a um, you know special kind like an make make it a scalene triangle that'll be the best so all the sides are different lengths and all the angles are different sizes and then draw a vector just over here somewhere and then use your compass and straight edge to physically draw that okay we'll come back to the next video we'll go over some of this in a little bit more detail and it'll make a little bit more sense to you um, we can also use translations, translations using tracing. So we can use tracing paper or hamburger patty paper or transparency paper. Uh, so with paper you can kind of, you can see through that's pretty thin. Patty paper works really good for this. Um, take your tracing paper, trace over the pre-image and place a dot at the initial point of the vector. This is the hard part, without rotating the paper, Slide the point from the beginning of the original vector to the end of the original vector, and then you'll see your trace making that slide, making that translation, and where it ends up should be the image point. And you'll literally see the motion taking place. Now, the, the best thing to do is you'll, you'll take something like this picture where you've already done this, put your tracing paper over this original pre-image here, trace that, and with the paper, same paper big enough, 
to cover, go down here to point O, put a dot right there. And without being careful not to rotate your paper, slide O to R. And when you do that, A will slide right down the same vector, this copy of the same vector up here from A to A prime, and B will slide from B to B prime, and C will slide from C to C prime. And you can see this triangle in motion sliding all the way down to here. Okay, so you can use the tracing paper as a really nice check to see if you basically did it right if you do a compass and straight edge construction. Or you can actually do it. The only problem with doing it just that way with just tracing paper alone is extremely difficult to keep the, uh, the paper from rotating a little bit. Okay. So the next exercise is use trans, you know, use patty paper. Okay. Uh, trace along each of the original figures and so forth to do that. Now, next we talk about where, what are some of the geometric geometry sketchpad commands. Uh, here they are. I'm just going to leave it there on the screen. You can look to pause and read those if you want, but the next video is going to show you how this is doing in geometry sketchpad. Okay. And then we'll come back maybe a little bit later and look about how we do it in GeoGebra. But here are the commands for doing it in GeoGebra, which you're probably more likely to have at this point. And again, I'll come back later and do that. And then here's the exercise. Create a single GeoGebra activity. Include both a static copy and link. Okay. But construct a general triangle. Create two free points in the plane and create a vector from one to the other and translate the triangle by that vector. Another is to create an input slider box combination for the parameters delta x and delta y. Create the vector delta x, delta y in algebra view and translate the original triangle by that vector. And the other way to do it is by magnitude and direction and do slider input box combinations for the magnitude and another one for the direction parameter. And then the algebra view, uh, create the corresponding vector, making use of your knowledge of converting from magnitude and direction to horizontal and vertical components and translate the triangle by that vector. Okay, I think I'm going to stop there and go on to my next video, which shows you some of this a little bit better in uh, Geometry Sketchpad.